union between one sister and one sister. It is not a union between one brother and one brother. It is a union between one man and one woman. So marriage is a social covenant. It is like a social contract. It is an agreement between two people created by God in his own image and his own likeness. It is God trying to reunite his divided image trying to bring the woman and the man together so that they can live together under the atmosphere of peace. Amen. Amen. So in this kind of marriage, you need God because it is God that provides the insurance to the marriage. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if you have decided to marry without God, then it means that you are going without insurance. Felony. If you drive without insurance in this country, be rest assured that you go to downtown. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So you need God in this institution. Mm. You have to commit it into the hands of God every day. Pray as if you are praying for money. <laughs> ah, because marriage can lift you up or it can break you down. Marriage can promote you or demote you. Marriage has caused some people to commit suicide. They are already dead and gone. Because you have to commit it into the hands of God. He's the one who created it and he's the one who can protect it. He's the one who can secure it. He's the one who can make it work. He's the one who can make it succeed. So you will need God. You will need Jesus Christ in the marriage. Every time you take Christ out of the marriage, you face crisis. If you decide to take Christ out of your marriage, then you will go ahead and experience crisis. But I pray that you will not take Christ out of your marriage. Oh, I said you will not take Christ out of your marriage. You see, what baffles me is that sometimes when problem comes, then we begin to take it to downtown, we begin to take it to court. But when we are getting married, we brought the marriage to God. So when you face anything, you have to take it back to the one who helped you to get married. Amen. I mean, yeah. But sometimes we advertise our problems. And every time you promote your problems in the marriage, you will get people to patronize them. You will get customers because the main motive of what advertising is to get customers. So if you decide to advertise your marriage, you will get customers to buy it for you. Mm -hmm. If you invite the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the sister-in-law, the offer-in-law, the uncle-in-law into your marriage. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen. Oh, yeah. You see, so seriously, I don't even know how to put it. Because the mother-in-laws and the father-in-laws are taking over the marriage. Nowadays, especially in America. And uh, 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 some places. But we allow ourselves, we invited them into it. We introduce them into the marriage. So when you introduce somebody into your marriage, definitely the person will not just become a spectator, but the person will become a referee last man. The person will become a church. The person... As a matter of fact, I will take over the marriage and dictate what you should do and what you should not do in that marriage. But I pray the mother-in-law and the father-in-law, the sister-in-law, the auntie-in-law and the mother in laws in the marriage that what they are done with their own, they should allow their children also to marry their own marriage. Oh, yes. oh you can do it better oh, yes. than that. So marriage, you need God in your mind. Somebody said, I need God. I need God. You see, marriage is not just, just a spiritual, but it also has physical components to it. Amen. So you cannot every day stand in the spirit. When you come home, when you go out, your wife will slap you. The woman will tell you that, my brother, you have to come out of the spirit and face the reality of life. 
You cannot stay in the spirit every day. You have to come out of the spirit because some of the things are not spiritual things. They are physical things that you have to deal with it yourself. It's not Satan, it's not God who is messing up that marriage. It is you yourself. So you have to come out of the spirit and face the reality of life. Amen. You see, we have to maintain that relationship, maintain that marriage. I, I always tell people that whatever that attracts you to your husband or to your wife, if you maintain it, you'll be able to uh, retain your husband or wife. If you maintain that particular thing, if it was your prayer life, if you manage to maintain that level, your husband or your wife will still be there for you. If it was the way you walk, just walk it. Your husband will be there for you because he saw that working and that attracted him to you. So if you maintain that working, your husband will be there for you. If you maintain that level, he will be there for you. But sometimes when we get married, we think that it is over. Amen. Amen. I'm married. My man, it's over now. I got a man. I got the woman. So it's, it's over now. Especially when the children are, are counting, then the woman begins to dress anyhow. Amen. Amen. When the baby comes out, then you see the belly also coming out. Just push the belly now. Mercy. Push it back. Push it back. Let the belly go back, Papa. <laughs> and you used to dress very nice. And now you've changed to become. Good <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you decided to destroy somebody's property. Is it right? Amen. You see, if you maintain whatever that attracted you to your husband, whatever that attracted you to your wife, you will retain that person. Amen. Let me give you the last one so that we close. Marriage also has a structure. Somebody shall structure. If you go to any organization, they have an organizational chart. Because there is a chart, it means that we have to follow protocol. Like in this church, we have pastor over here. And the pastor has a taking board also under him and other leaders. So he is the head. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He said, a man, as he said, Christ is the head of the man. And the man is the head of the woman. And God is the head of Christ. So there should be an order in the house. Amen. 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 It doesn't matter the money that you have, the kind of job that you have. Woman, the man is. You don't want to say it. As a matter of fact, if the man goes and comes home drunk, Bible says he is. Agreed? Yes. God bless you. Clap for yourself. So the marriage has a structure. But with a structure, we have positions. And every position comes with responsibilities. So you cannot just sit down and say, I am a man, I am a man, I am a man in the house without doing anything in the house. Go and find work to do. And take care of your wife and your children. Am I preaching today? So you have a responsibility to what? To fulfill. You cannot just sit down. I am a man. Why didn't you tell me? I am a man. Why didn't you do this? I am a man. Why didn't you say? If you are a man, then you have to fulfill your obligation. Amen. Hallelujah. But I also encourage my dear sisters, as Paul said in Ephesians 5, verse 22, he says, submit. Submit. That language is <laughs> not in the dictionary of some people. The submission portion of it? No. I am my own boss. I bought my own ticket. I married you in America. I have a good job, better job than you. Ah, why should I submit to you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Many marriages are tearing apart because of lack of submission. Many marriages are facing crisis because of lack of submission. He says, submit to your own husband. Who? Submit to who? Your own husband, but some women have <laughs> professional certificate in submitting to other men's other women's husbands. The pastor, God bless you, Papa. I love you so much, Papa. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. But Papa is not your husband. Yes, you have to respect him. But Bible says, submit to your own. The women are not talking to you. <laughs> they don't like it. He said, when you get the paycheck, just give it to the man for the man to manage it. Amen. That one, they will never say anything. Yes. Ah, ah, they will say, Tafia Ka. Tafia Ka. Tafia Ka. Tafia Ka. I went to work myself. I stood on my knees and you are telling me that I should give a paycheck to the man for the man to manage it. This will not happen. <laughs> not in America. <laughs> may God help all of us. Oh, I said may God help all of us. I said may God help all of us. If we can do it, our home, 
it will be very peaceful. There will be an order. God is God of order. There will be an order. And he said, Men, love your own wife as yourself. Love who? Your own wife. Not somebody's daughter. <laughs> Some people, they have, they, they are very good. They are seriously good. Seriously good in loving others, even more than their wives. You talk anyhow to your wife. You say whatever you want to say to your wife. And you want the woman to respect you. And it's so painful. After the woman has breastfeed, you want her to let feed you again. He didn't say anything. Yeah. He said, like feeding. Yeah. 